When you started off that first set, it was 1970s. There's no doubt about that. And I was a teenager. And I was singing those songs and I'm thinking, some of them were, some were, and I was thinking, did we really sing those words? You know what? I need to go back and read them again. They were powerful. I think as a teenager I must have just drifted over them. But tonight it was like, powerful. Thanks, Nick. Somewhere there. There we go. Oh, it's on the back screen. You can't get me up? That's going to be good. <laughs> get the band back up and we'll go home. <laughs> Someone will sort it out. But let's start anyway. 170 years ago, if you were to walk through Lilydale, there would be nothing here. Well, there would. There'd be a creek, Olinda Creek. No lake, no main street, nothing. You would find, though, 170 years ago, you would find Cashin's flour mill. And if some of you have walked around the lake, you would see the remnants of that on the side of the lake. Of course, the lake wasn't there. They used to use the creek to grind, to, to, to run the grinders. And I would have had a picture of it up there, but you know what? Whoa, we're moving forward. This is good. Don't touch anything. <laughs> There's the picture. I don't know how they took a a photo 170 years ago, but maybe it was an artist impression, or they did, maybe they did some way of doing it. But that stone building on the left, if you walk around Lilydale Lake, you find a little bit of that. A snapshot of history of Lilydale. It was first surveyed in 1860 by Clement Hodgkinson. It was first called Brushy Creek. Did you know that? Welcome to Brushy Creek. Is that a good name? Well, no, that wasn't good enough, so they went to Lilydale with two L's. They thought, hang on a minute, we're going to change that, and we went to Lilydale with one L in 1872. But the Lilydale Lake kept the two L's, if you've been walking around it. It was named after Lily de, de Castella, Daughter of Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Anderson. Means nothing to me. Does it mean anything to you? Other than there are two pretty awesome streets in Lilydale called Anderson Road, is it? And Costello Street. They're only like next to each other. That was this morning. <laughs> at the front of my house in Lilydale. The bins. Well, I put the bins out, and as I went to get the bins, I thought, hey, look at that. About five years ago, I put some stickers on the bins. I love Lilydale. You can hardly see the love, because it used to be bright red, but the love has faded out of them now. <laughs> I love Lilydale. Even my bins love Lilydale. But if I was to be truly honest with you, I would say that my first impressions of Lilydale were not quite like that. 27 years ago, I was a pastor in Bega, my first year of ministry. And I was invited to drive to come to Lilydale, Lilydale, for the Institute of Youth Ministry held up at the Academy. It was in the holidays, and we were to drive down there, and all I could think of is Lilydale sounds a bit feminine to me. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Smack. Why couldn't it be called Baronia or Mitcham? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it just sounded... Anyway, I came to Lilydale for a week. 1996. We did our institute up at the school. 
in the holidays, had, a, had an amazing week. And then on Sabbath, we were taken to a youth church that was really happening in Melbourne. And guess where we went? Here, to your hall, in 1996. I think at that stage, from memory, you might have run the two services at the same time. Uh, one in there, one in here. That wasn't the two that we have now. And I can remember sitting in the hall, packed with young people, in 1996, and my first impressions of Lilydale were very good, way back then. Well, I'll go back to the bins for a minute. My impressions of Lilydale have changed. Not only the town, but the church has got better than what I saw in 1996. Robin and I, and family have been members here now for 10 years. Well, this is our 10th year. So we've been here for a little piece of the bigger piece, but it's been a good journey, a good journey. There was this document that I asked Faye and Darren for. I said, give me a little bit of history about the church, because I only go back 10 years, that's all I know. I know no more, so I got this little document. It's two pages long. I'm not reading it all to you. It was written by a man by the name of Bert Gibbs. Anyone know him? Oh, look at that. I don't. <laughs> but, but, but apparently it was written about 15 years ago. We're guessing. We don't exactly know. But it starts like this. In the early months of 1973, that's 50 years ago, a small group of church members seceded, it's a word I don't know, from the Croydon Adventist Church to form a company in Mirrelbark. The Croydon church at that stage was overcrowded and it felt, and it was felt by a number of the members that there was an opportunity to extend their influence towards Mirrelbark and Lydale. After a short while, the company became an official church and on March the 3rd, 1973, that same year, 60 persons were voted in as charter members of the Muralbark Adventist Church. It's not Lilydale yet. The Muralbark Adventist Church. Almost immediately, the Building and Finance Committee was elected and was given the responsibility of selecting a suitable piece of land for a future church. Sound like they're on fire, huh? Let's go. Let's just look at some of the significant dates. And we're not going to spend much time, but it's just a snapshot 1973, 50 years ago, that new group, 60 charter members, was formed. In 1974, a year later, they purchased this block of land. In 1977, the building commenced construction. In 1979, they weren't even finished, but they decided to meet in it anyway, and they met in, the, in this building in 1979. And in 1981, as you've already heard earlier tonight, the church was officially opened on March the 28th, 1981. A journey. What a journey. There's six rocks that I found in this document that I want to share with you just briefly before we finish up. Six rocks. One. Prayer. It came through a number of spots in this little two-page document and I just took a couple of snapshots out. It took a little over two years of searching and what? And prayer? Two years of searching and prayer? It was a long... Two years is ages. Two years of searching and prayer to find a suitable site for the new church. And on the 23rd of June, 1974, a business meeting was convened on the block where we are presently situated. This was written in the letter. It was voted and carried that we should purchase the land for our future church building. I don't know where they sat. Was it here? Was it over there? It was on this piece of land somewhere. They had a meeting. There was nothing here other than a few trees and some grass. The block was purchased for 15000 It was probably a lot in 1974. <laughs> Doesn't sound much now, but it was probably huge. Rock number two. Well, first of all, is prayer important? Yeah, yeah it is. It is. And if this church is to continue successfully into the future, it needs to continue to be a praying church. 
And I would just ask you for one minute right now to just with someone beside you pray for the future of this church. Just real quickly and briefly for one minute together. Just grab somebody. I don't care who it is. Can I pray with you? And pray for one minute. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Rock number two, families. And these are the rocks this church was built on. And out of that two-page document, I picked up these snippets. The little church became a very happy family, gradually increasing its membership with new converts or transfers from other churches. We had many pleasant social occasions together. Is it important to play together as a church? 100%. Some, of, some will remember, as written in the letter, with little nostalgia, the pancake nights at Garth Jones Place in the Dandenongs and the campouts at Fraser National Park. Anyone remember that? Because I don't. A couple of people. Where is even Fraser National Park? I, all I could think of was Fraser Island. Okay, right, beautiful. But... How amazing is that little snapshots of the power of families. So the first one was prayer. The second one was families. The third one was commitment. This church has grown on people that are committed. Committed to not only their God, but committed to a broad range of things. And just a couple of the snapshots. It was agreed that several groups containing 13 men would dedicate one Sunday a month to the building of the church, this church, which meant that there would be an effective working bee almost every Sunday of the year. And this went for four years. So that was the men going for it. But then it says a combined talents of the church members, that's everyone, men, women and children, allowed us to construct on site. And I can imagine they were all here at times. Items such as window frames, right beside you, structural steel were, and all sorts of things are normally given to subcontractors. This, of course, resulted in a significant cost reduction in the building of this church. So we have prayer, we have families, we have commitment. And I see that here in this church all the time. And the fourth one is time and money. The time that is given, the voluntary hours that this church, the people of this church have given has been huge. The money that the people of this church has given has been huge as well. And a couple of snapshots from that letter. After four long years, the church was completed almost exclusively by volunteer labour at a cost of $120,000. Can't even buy a land cruiser for that. (laughs) And was officially opened on March 28, 1981. A building fund was established and this was financed by the time-proven stewardship plan. Also, a special church offering box was placed in the foyer to encourage giving. So there was lots of giving, giving of time, giving of finances. So we have, what do we have? Prayer, families, commitment, time and money. Number five, the Lord's leading. Over the period of the building, in this letter it says, the Lord led in many ways. Much searching and prayer and the word providentially popped up many times as well. I want you for a minute or two to actually share with somebody how you've seen God leading in this church. You've got two minutes this time. Go for it.
10 seconds. So over tomorrow, as you chat to people, I would love to hear all your answers, but we can't, but share them with others. Share little snippets of how you've seen God lead in this church over those past however many years you have been here. And what will God do in the future? What is his plan for Lilydale Church? Lilydale Church, I believe, is in a really good place to reach this community in an amazing way. Number six, growth. 60 members were voted in as charter members. And then it says, it is interesting to note that our first baptism took place in the church before it was completed. They were onto it. The church wasn't even finished, but we need to baptise someone somewhere. So they brought them in, I'm guessing, right in here, and probably there's holes in the roof still, I don't know. And we baptised them. Church growth. We want to see people in the kingdom Six rocks. Six rocks in that letter. Prayer, families, commitment, time and money. The Lord's leading and the church continues to grow. And they're in no specific order. It's just how I found them in the letter. They're all important. And what can we as a group of people do move going forward from here for God? I believe that amazing things can happen in this community. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 said this, says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So if we're not sure of the path of the future for this church, we can, be rest, we can rest assured that, hey, there's a plan, even if we don't know it. What will God do with this church? over the next 12 months and beyond. I can't wait to see. Well, these people. Oh, that was tonight. <laughs> You're history now. <laughs> it's happened. Or oh, it's happening. And that was early. That's just after everyone started coming in the door and they said, Grace, there's a lot more of you here. And I drove past this morning and I thought, wow, it looks good out there. But you know what? While the building looks good, the building is nothing without us. And we need to look after our building for sure because it looks after us as well and it is God's house. But it's us. What will God do with us moving forward? We love Lilydale.